Hello everyone, welcome to my channel, Crafting with Rhonda MC. Today I want to come on and share with you all um, a technique that I use to make the earrings that I recently shared with you all. I've had a few questions on how I made them. Uh, you can go online and YouTube, you know, it is a wonderful source of finding information. There are tons and tons of different ways of doing this. I believe uh, the one that I saw it was um, called the watercolor technique and the name of the girl is Ludmila, I believe was her name, but um, this is how I did it and I, let me get started and I'll show you all how to make, these are the earrings that were, I guess technique is what they were asking for. The earrings, the other ones I gave away, I gave them to my daughter for a gift so I no longer have them. But I believe this is the um, technique that they're asking about. So, this is what it looks like. Alright, so let's get started. First off, you will want to have some silver uh, Primo clay. You want to have a brown. And you'll also want to have a transparent. I've ran all of these through my pasta machine. These I ran through and have them conditioned. I ran them through each about 15 times so they're nice and pliable and ready to work with. And what you'll want to do is once you've, um, I'm using a brown and the silver, and the silver looks like it might have like a little bit of uh, fleck in it or a little bit of mica, and it came like that. So, all right, so you'll put your uh, brown on the bottom and then you'll put your silver on the top now once you have these on top of each other you're going to want to um, run them through your pasta machine or either roll them to get the you know to get it longer and um, thinner I use my pasta machine for this step so I'm going to run it through at a number seven a number five and then a number three seven being my largest setting and then working down to my smallest okay so these two are stacked and I just kind of you know roll them together make sure they're together good and I'm going to trim the edges up too before I run it through just so everything's nice and uniform and nice and neat okay I'll run it through and I'll be back all right, you guys, I'm back. I've ran it through my pasta machine on a seven, a five, and then a three. I'm going to take it out, and I'm just going to trim it up nice and neat. You'll want to save some of your scraps because you can go back and you can make some really interesting looking uh, beads with those. I'm just cleaning this up a little bit. All right, now we've got that nice and squared up in this little corner here. And I can tell where I touched it, I do have a little bit of that brown on there. I'm just going to kind of wipe over it a little bit. Fingerprints on there. Okay. Now, once you have those together, you will want to pick out your colors. My color scheme I chose, um, I went through some of my paints that I have, and a lot of these I've had for a while, and but i Pulled them out because I thought the colors were pretty. This one um, I found. It's made by Crayola. And it is a glitter. Oh, let's see. Washable Kid Paint. Made by Crayola. The glitter palette. And I purchased this at the Dollar Tree. I've had it for a while. And I was just in there the other day. And I did see that they have some. Um, I also use the Apple Barrel Paint. I use this one. And it is called... A uh, new shamrock. I use an apple barrel. It's called uh, periwinkle blue. And like I said, I've had these for a while. Uh, and I also use luminaire. 
by, let's see, by Jacquard. And this is the Pearl White. Okay, so what you'll want to do after you have those all rolled out, you'll want to take your paintbrush, and I just used a dry brush. I started out with um, this blue, and like I said, the blue, it is a glitter. It has glitter in it. So all you want to do is just kind of take and just put streaks here and there. And you'll go back and you'll fill in in between each of these with the other colors. Little streaks here and there. Now, while this is drying, you want to prep your transparent Primo, which I've already done here. I think I might try, I'm going to try and run it through one more time because you want it really, really thin and transparent. All right, I'll be right back. Okay, now that that has dried, we want to go ahead and we want to put our translucent on. And I did go back and I ran it through um, another time because I wanted to get it as thin as possible so see you can see my fingers through it oh i got a little piece of lint or something on here okay there we go all right so what i want to do is i want to put this on top let's see here okay and i'm going to go back with my tissue cutter and just kind of cut around the edge here let's see if maybe I can I didn't make it quite big enough but I can probably work this out where I can lay it on top in a couple other places so we'll just put it here like so And let's see, we'll put it here. Okay, and it looks like we are just, that's as much as we're going to get out of that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut this little corner off like this. Alright, there we go. Okay, now that you have this on, okay, now that you have the transparent sheet on top all right you want to roll it in a circular motion and you want to make sure you don't have any air bubbles in there like see here there's a little air bubble and all you want to do is if you have air bubbles just kind of slice your and just kind of roll it roll it around all right we have the clear all transparent Primo on top. So now I'm going to take this back to my pasta roller. I'm going to roll it through a seven, a five, and a three. All right, I ran it through a seven, a five, and a three. And now all you want to do is just randomly tear pieces off. And as you tear them off, 
Just lay them randomly on top of each other. And just keep tearing them, just tear little pieces off, and randomly overlap them. The darker color is what gives it that the look, uh, the vein look in them. And you want to make sure you don't leave any any gaps because once we get these in place you will go back and um, we're going to run them through the machine again well we're going to roll it and then we'll run them through the machine one more time just to make sure we don't have any little any little empty spaces so see, I'm just randomly tearing these and placing them. All right, um, I'm not going to keep recording. Okay, you guys, I have all of them down and made sure that they're overlapping, not, in, not wanting to leave, you know, a bunch of gaps in it. All right, and then we'll go back with our roller and we're going to roll over them just to make sure everything's together. And again, you just want to kind of do it in a circular motion as to not to distort everything and move it all around. Okay. And as you can see, it does look like it's, you know, it's textured right now, but it is getting nice and smooth. Alright, so we have that all rolled out. Now I'm going to take it and I'm going to run it through the pasta machine. I'm going to run it through at a 7, a 5, and a 3. And I'll be back. Alright, now that I have it all rolled out, this is what it looks like. Now it's ready to cut. Uh, since I already made some using these shapes, I just bought these the other day. And I would like to try and use those. Something a little different. So I like to put a piece of paper down and then put my clay on top to cut these out and just randomly in different places I will cut out the ones that I want to use and the paper just keeps it from sticking they seem to do a lot better oh and you know what I forgot something this you can see see how it just the edges just look like real sharp and blunt you can take a piece of saran wrap all right, and take the saran wrap and put the saran wrap down. And then we'll cut out another one. Let's see, that was the big one. Let's do another little one. All right. When you use the saran wrap, it just gives it, um, I don't know, it just rounds the edges so much prettier. See, this is, this is with the saran wrap. And then this is the one that it doesn't have it. I don't know if you can tell. See how the, the edge just looks more rounded. All right. So that's that one. Put those down. Put the saran wrap down. Those two out. Actually, this color turned out, you know, it's kind of hard to duplicate stuff because you never know. We'll see how after I bake them, if they look, if the color comes out. But right now, see, this is the finished and this is what they're looking like before we bake them. So we'll see how it turns out. But this is the technique that I use to make the earrings, and that's what you guys were asking for. You know, it's not perfect. I'm not a professional at this. This is just, you know, a hobby, something that I enjoy. I'm sure there are other people out there that have been doing this for years that can, um, 
that have more expertise in this and they can tell you how to do it but this is just this is how I did mine and I'm sharing with you how I did mine so we've got all these all right and I do have I have my uh, little toaster oven I have that preheating as we're cutting everything so it'll be ready for me to pop these in and once they come out I will be back and I'll show you guys how they turned out now also I like to drill my holes after they have um, baked all right I just popped them in the oven 275 for about 15 minutes and once they are done I'll come back and show you what they look like now this leftover we can save this we can make some beads with this so I, think I might just kind of neatly fold it up a little bit let's see here what we can do with that all right you guys i'll be back now that they've come out the oven this is what they look like and actually it is really hard to duplicate um what i did before because you can see the color difference but i mean i use the same colors the same thing i just i guess i put a little bit more down and i did in that one as you can see there are there are a few little air bubbles in there that I did not get all the air bubbles out. So that's a lesson that I taught you guys. Just make sure that you make sure there's no air bubbles in there. I didn't do that one very well. Let's see here. Yeah, these look pretty good. Now, another thing also, I forgot to sprinkle. Um, I have some really fine glitter some silver glitter that I had sprinkled on them and I didn't do that to these so but I think these are pretty I like these once I um drill the holes in them and, and put the clear coat on them I think they're going to look nice so this is what they turned out like all right you guys well that's how I made the earrings and you know you'll just go back and you'll drill your holes in and attach your findings there you have it. All right. Well, thank you for coming and visiting my channel today. Y'all have a blessed one.